Okay, Luke. Here's Great the Jasco. problem. Yes. When I set out to smartify my head, honestly, I don't even know why I did it. It was it was partly morbid curiosity because I think you and I have talked about this fairly extensively in the past. I'm not that huge into the home automation thing. I never have been. I am a, 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 a young, able-bodied young man, and I, I don't mind getting up and pressing a light switch. And that's always really the way that I felt about it. But yeah, me too. I figured, okay, we're moving into this new place. We're ripping off a ton of the drywall anyway. I don't know if I've told this story publicly, but we found this. Um, shoot, you would your your dad would know for sure. But there's a there's a kind of there's a kind of in wall uh, plumbing piping that's really terrible, but that was used extensively oh. in the '90s. Oh. Yeah. yeah, he's he's for sure told me, but I'm not gonna remember the name. Basically, yeah. you find it in your house, you rip it out, you replace it. Yeah. There's no other way to go about it because it's not a matter of if it will fail, it's a matter of when it will fail. So we ended up peeling back a lot more of the drywall and a lot more of the ceilings than we had originally intended because Polly B, Polly B, thank you, Twitch chat. Uh, there we go. Because yeah. we had to pull all of that stuff out of the house and there's bathrooms everywhere. So once that was done, I kind of went... Well, shoot, this was originally built back in the mid 90s. It is now the early 2020s. By the time I'm done with it, it will be, I don't know, the 2040s, the 2050s, the 2060s, God willing. When it comes to resell this place, if it is not wired up for smart home, a smart home is just going to be a home by that point if things keep going according to the trajectory they're on right now. So this is the opportunity to put this stuff in and do it in a way that is clean and professional instead of just, you know, little little nail on cable management things all, all over the house. So fine, right. let's go ahead. Let's freaking, let's wire it up then. And part of that was figuring out light switches. Now there's a wide variety of different smart light switches and they all come with some kind of of terrible deal breaking problem pretty much whether it's the outrageous cost or the super closed ecosystem in some cases i mean insteon that's the one that shut down outright right that gives you an example of how bad it can be if there's a, a hyper closed ecosystem associated with this particular light switch uh lutron i tried so hard I tried so hard to like their switches. I bought a Caseta. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I, I bought one of their switches a while back. I installed their stupid little hub that you need with it. And the second I walked into the room and wanted to use it manually, I was like, nope. Pulled it out. No tactile feedback <laughs> on it whatsoever. Oh, and gross. the switches themselves yeah. are like, like, like pennies bad. Not tens of pennies bad pennies bad like it felt like it felt like pushing down on like rotting food or something like it had it had Ugh. no it had no like click whatsoever uh yeah we've got we've got the chat talking about this like yeah so I, I get it i get it from a from a smart control standpoint they might be all right anyway i came across this one from ge or so i thought uh, i will get more into that later i came across this one from ge that i really liked Okay, it has, you know, if you're reaching around a corner, given, you know, given the room, the old reach around, it's easy to tell which part of the button is up, which part is down. Yeah. It works like a dimmer switch, I would ex how I would expect it to work. You press and hold for dim up, press and hold to go down. You know, I'm a, I'm a 90s boy, had my CD Walkman, all right? You press and hold track skip to fast forward instead, all right? So it, it was intuitive to control for me. And what I really liked about it was that every single switch for a nominal increase in cost has a motion sensor in it. What's cool about mm. that is that while motion sensing is not a perfect way to handle presence detection, it certainly is an additional data point. And if you've got these motion sensors all over, all over your house, well, all of a sudden you've got a really cool bit of data to throw at what we're probably going to we're probably going to add to it with cameras but you've got a really cool data point to add to presence detection which can save you a freaking ton of money especially in the summer months when you don't need to be running air conditioning in rooms where there are not people that's the main concern is how can we make this place more efficient because if i blow five or ten i think it's somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars i spent on these freaking light switches but if i blow that money today over 10 years 
they could pay for themselves with a good implementation. Okay? Right. Okay. So that's why I kind of went, <clears throat> you know what? Sure. Let's do that. And while we're at it, heck, let's do the blinds too, because you throw in some temperature sensing and all of a sudden you can kind of go, or you throw in weather data, you can be like, hey, when it's too sunny, close them. Or when it's in, when it's the morning, open them up so that you have a more natural waking experience or, you know, whatever. Like, I want to try that stuff because part of being a tech personality is that I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to try stuff and I'm supposed to have some kind of, you know, experience with it. So... This was my one shot, my one opportunity. Now, as it turns out, these GE switches that I not only bought, but also paid to have installed throughout the entire house, which as you can imagine is not particularly cheap. Well, they didn't work. Um, there's a whole bunch, we got them adopted. They're, they're Z-Wave devices. We got them adopted in Home Assistant. We could see all the different parameters. Lots of cool things you can adjust. You can tell it, Hey, you know, have a longer delay to start sensing again uh, once you're turned off so that like you can walk away from it without it just like turning on immediately. Oh, yeah. The default behavior yeah. does that. So you've been to my house, right? How annoying yeah. is the default behavior? It's, it's, it's a little annoying. Yeah. I also like I'm not used to my house has like almost no smart stuff. It's not a house. It's a small apartment. So I don't really need anything. Like there's no, there's, if I'm like, oh, I'm going to bed and I have to go turn off all the lights. It's like, darn, that'll take me 15 seconds. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, but being in a room and having it just turn off on you, like that happened to us the last time I was there, actually. We were standing around in the room, like horsing around. We were moving around a fair amount and the lights still turned off. Um, that's, that's a little annoying. Yeah. And the, the really stupid thing about it is that the second you turn it off, like it once it reaches off, the motion sensor is active again. So as you pre you can press it, walk away from it, and it, it'll turn back on. Come on, stop! <laughs> I actually wish for it to be dark now. No problem though, because these are all parameters that you can adjust. You can change the ramp on and ramp off speed. Um, so we were playing around with it, and one of the one of the maybe not first things, but one of the the first few things that Jake and I wanted to adjust was turning off the motion sensor in places where it doesn't make sense because there could be areas where we want to use the motion sensor for presence detection, but we don't necessarily want it to control the lights. For example, in a bathroom, I might want the motion sensor to control the lights. Whereas in something like a, oh, I don't know, a bedroom, okay? I don't want motion to turn on the lights. I'm freaking sleeping. Unless I unless I set it on some kind of a schedule, like I could create. Uh, is this a sex thing that you? What what are you gesturing about? <laughs> I mean, you're talking about motion on, turning on lights in a bedroom. You you have to have set that up. There's no way you didn't set that up. I I I I actually <laughs> was thinking about it completely for, in practical terms. Okay, practical terms. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, look, speak for yourself, but people like me, we don't need the lights on, okay, in the bedroom. <laughs> you can find your way around. My face might be all right, but there's things you don't want to look at, okay? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so we tried to turn the motion sensor off. It completely didn't work. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Home Assistant team, okay? My immediate reaction was... Man, bloody open source software, bad product, uh, home assistant. Come on, guys, you got to get your act together. I, I didn't say I it, say that. but I did think it. I thought it for a couple of seconds. And so we, we okay. kind of, we first tried to troubleshoot through home assistant. Okay, do we need to apply the setting in a different way? Do we need to try it again? Does the switch, then we thought, does the switch need a little while for it to apply? But then we went, we had a different model of switch that's not a dimmer. It's the same, it looks identical. It has the motion sensor, but it's not a dimmer. And that one worked fine. We were able to disable the motion sensor. And we went, oh, well, hold on a second. What's going on here? So we checked the Home Assistant dashboard, and the switches are running very different firmwares. After some quick Googling, we realized the switches I just bought are running firmware from, as far as we can tell, four or five years ago. And I'm sitting here going, who ships a product like that? I literally went to OnePlus's factory like like Oppo's factory, and they showed me how it works 
when you apply software or firmware to your product on the way off the assembly line. And there should be no reason why they can't just load a, a newer, better image so that it ships with updated firmware. So supposedly, the newer firmwares have fixed this it's not selling. problem, right? So, okay, Luke, tell me, you realize the firmware is out of date on your product. What should you do? Update. Okay. How? I'm assuming because it's a, a smart home device, you could you could OTA over the air. Okay. So because I'm using Home Assistant, um, which is like uh, I don't do I don't do home automation stuff. No, so that's I, I might, fine. No, 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 no. I'm just this is no, my no. this is my assumption. It's all good. Uh, that that could be that could be a valid way. Because I'm using uh, because I'm using Home Assistant, uh, you can push an update through Home Assistant. But it's it's not it's not just one ecosystem, right? Like it's this it's right. an amazing, yeah, yeah. amazing platform that ties in through like third party plugins and all kinds of cool stuff, ties in like most smart ecosystems in, into one one cool uh, one cool platform, one one integrated platform. Um, but what it what it needs me to do is it needs me to point it to a firmware file. Okay, so I can click the device, I can go into advanced, update firmware, and then it, it prompts me for a file. So what's my next step then? Um, you you get the file and you give it the file. Okay, well, I mean, where should I get the file? Is this, so this is firmware from Jasco, right? I'll just get yeah. it from Jasco? Yeah, well, I would think so. But oh, do they not, they don't I went have, on to you Jasco's, like can't download? I went to Jasco's website and the support section of their website. Okay, let's just. Why don't we visit Jasco together? Let's I'm doing visit this Jasco right now. <laughs> all yeah. together. Okay? I'm trying to find it. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's go on a little. What? No, not what the just, heck? not right now. Okay. Buyjasco.com. Wait, what? Why is there? What? What is buyjasco.com? Why do you have buyjasco.com as your ad and then jasco.com? Oh, because Jasco Applied different Sciences company. is a completely different yeah, company. Yeah, it's it's by Jasco. Okay, by Jasco.com. Okay, so maybe I might click support. Does that seem like a pretty cool place to go? Mm-hmm. FAQ, resource library, refund return policy, contact us, order support, promotion details. Well, resource library maybe, right? I mean, come on, let, Luke, let's, let's go through it together. Let's go through it together. I, I, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, the, the, the interesting thing to me is Google is auto filling a lot of this. So mm -hmm. pe people are looking for this stuff. Right. And are clearly unable to find it. Uh, but yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go along specifically with you. So, so what I clicked on here was resource library. Yep. Okay. Um, Ooh. And then I scrolled some... down and found nothing interesting at all. Ooh, um, energy and then tips. I left. <laughs> all right. Well, what's our next? Uh, What's our next? Uh, what's our next path so, here? What do we do I, next? At this point, the next thing that I did was I, I left the Buy Jasco website and I just went to Google and I because I was like, whatever, I don't know. Maybe it's weird navigation on their website. Maybe I don't know how to find it. Who knows? Sure. So I just Googled Buy Jasco firmware download yeah. or firmware update. I yeah. did both. How's both of them auto filled. It, it yeah. knew both of them were things that people are going to look for. Yeah. Um, and neither of them got me anywhere. Uh, the, the first page that came up was the support page, because that's probably where most humans are going when they're looking for this thing. Um, but there's clearly nothing there. Um, they have an FAQ. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's like, I don't know. Maybe I don't understand this so much, but I expected there to be... Oh, this is just an... Wait, hold on. So what exact product do you have? Uh, it's a it's a GE and Brighton dimming motion sensor switch. So they don't have a section called like switches. They have Wi-Fi, Z-Wave. Yeah, you could open up the Z-Wave FAQ. Let's, sure, let's sure. I'm going to open up the Z-Wave FAQ. Why not? Now let's control after firmware. Nope. No. Nope. Nothing about <laughs> nothing. that. 
Nothing about that. Okay. So then, I mean, um, so what's now next? I would get angry on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I went one step further. I mean, come on. You can't go straight to being angry on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, no, I, I would e- I would email them or something. Okay. I would have contact support. Yeah. Well, you know what? Good guy, Jasco. Um, their, their, their number, both their local and toll-free, are listed on their Contact Us page. They have product support. You can actually contact their product support both via phone and via live chat. So we tried both of them. Okay. And... Yeah. You know, it seems like a pretty straightforward thing. Hi, I have an outdated firmware. I would like to get the updated firmware. What, pray tell, Mr. Lafreniere, do you think was the response? Um, what I hope was the response and what, based on the information that I have, I think was the response are very drastically different things. Um, I'm expecting that the response was like, there is no updated firmware or no response. That's what I expect the response was. Really? Okay, you're actually wrong on both counts. Nice. There is updated firmware. There is oh. there is updated firmware from as recently as I believe earlier this month. This product Whoa. is absolutely still receiving updated firmware that as far as we can tell from the information we found online, seems to resolve the exact issues that we're having with the product. This sounds great. So and, yeah. And, okay. Oh yeah, and we got responses both by phone. I waited about 12 minutes on hold and via live chat. So we got responses okay. and there is new firmware. So why am I mad? Is there no way to like upload it to the device? Oh no, there's a way to upload it to the device. It's through the Home Assistant interface. Very okay. simple. Yeah, you can up, Home Assistant will allow you to update your Z-Wave device. All you got to do is plunk the firmware file into the into the browse file explorer thing and it boop, it'll it'll upload it for you. Will it will it update the device? Oh yeah. Does it just store it? No, okay. It'll do a great job. So the new so the new firmware is on the device? No, 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 no. I well I I I well I don't have it. Oh, they just told you that they have new firmware. They didn't give it to you. They no. Well, why would they do that? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did they say? Did they say they just like wouldn't do it, or like what? How, what? How did this communication happen? I don't understand. <laughs> so and they, so they the... immediately, so they very not immediately, but they very very quickly responded and told you that they do indeed have exactly what you need, and it yes. is digital, and they can give it to you no problem. But they won't. But That's they what won't. They said. Why sir, did, did they sir, say why? That, firm, that firmware is proprietary. We do not provide that firmware to end users. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, so I want okay, wow. okay. I want to have. I, I want to have a little a little wow. fun here. Okay. Wow. I'm so bothered right now. It's not even me. I'm so annoyed. That's, wow. Oh, man. Okay. I would like our audience members who are artistically inclined. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I should be muting. I would like you guys to draw. I, I'm actually going to request fan art for, I think, the first time ever. I would like you to draw for me the executive who made this decision. That firmware cannot be provided to end users due to because it's proprietary <laughs> i feel like i don't i don't want to offend golfers but i feel like you should have him golfing while he says it i just i just want to see i just want to see i i want to see what what this story inspires you guys to come up with thanks for watching and thanks to dreamhost for sponsoring this week's clips dreamhost offers premium wordpress websites and hosting at affordable prices with free award-winning 24 7 customer support check out dreamhost current deals using the link below